Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will be making this stocking ornament from the Gnome Noel Christmas Fabric Collection. It's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make the Gnome Noel stocking ornament, we'll start with the pattern. I'm using a quarter inch grid graph paper and I started with a piece four and a half inches wide and seven and a half inches tall. You can see I've actually used this one and I kind of by hand sketched in the outline and then added a quarter of an inch. So the top of the stocking is three inches across. And then I went three inches, three inches, three inches all the way down until about four inches down. And then I curved out. I like my stockings always to kind of the toe faces to the right. So then I curved it out till about four and a quarter and then back around. Say so this side goes down straight until about five and a half. And then it begins to curve all the way down to the seven and a half. Um, it stays three inches wide. Yep, I think I said that correctly. About four inches down on this side and about five and a quarter on this side. And then it just swings out to create the toe. It doesn't have to be perfect. Honestly, just keep this three inches wide. That's important for the placement of the little gnome girl. All right, let's get started. We'll start by cutting out one foundation. This is Pelon 50, non-fusible stabilizer. Two linings, I'm using this white background fabric um, and they're reversed, there's one this way, one this way, so there's one is reversed. And then a backing fabric, I chose this red snowflake print, but remember for the backing, the toe needs to face to the left, so it's cut out in the opposite direction as the front. And so we're gonna start with our foundation and we're gonna place these prints. I have it down to a formula. So first I fussy cut this little gnome girl. She is the one who's by herself in her mushroom house. And uh, she's sort of facing this way. So she's facing a little bit to the right. So I'm going to center that right so that the bottom edge is right at the dip here in the stocking. And I'll pin that to secure. Then from these remaining fabrics, I just cut some strips. I cut a two and a half inch wide strip from the snowflake that will be for the cuff. And then beneath the gnome girl, I have the mushroom. This is also two and a half inches wide. Then below this one, I have kind of fussy cut this, um, let's call it the poinsettia fabric. Um, and I try to get the poinsettias just kind of centered in the middle of this strip, but it's still just a two and a half inch strip. And then finally from this stripe, instead of, you know, measuring and, and cutting, drawing a line cutting, I just cut right on this little sawtooth edge, the white sawtooth edge here, and then the white sawtooth edge here, because that's about a quarter of an inch and so when I allow for that seam allowance, it's going to make a nice sharp red edge against the edge of the white. Kind of hard to explain, but as we proceed, it'll be really obvious. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just sort of overlap that top edge with the snowflake and then stitch along here with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then I'll fold it back and press it flat. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off, but I always give myself a little extra wiggle room. So it's actually extended over the edges of the foundation. 
this is just in case I need to scoot it one way or another. Here we go. Now, when you flip it over, you can see that excess. And I am gonna trim that just so I can see where I'm going. I'm not trimming it exactly right to the edge of the foundation, but just enough so that I can see the shape of the stocking. Next is the dark mushroom print. I like to have something dark underneath here. Kind of looks like a ground. But the important thing is that this is a directional print. So I wanna put it kind of face to face so that when I flip it, the mushrooms are right side up. So again, I'm gonna extend this over on this side and ideally, when I cut this out and I centered it, I have a quarter of an inch below the mushroom house. So that way, when I sew the next strip, it's going to look like the mushroom house is just sort of resting right on the top of the brown print. I will stitch quarter inch seam allowance, flip it down and press it and I'll be right back. There we go, and then again, I'm going to trim it even with the edge of the foundation. Now here's where, that was easy, just straight line, straight line, but this is where it gets a little bit more fun. So what I want is to go down about two inches. So about to here, and then I have my, um, here it is. I'm using this silver pen it's nice because it shows up on dark fabric. And then on this side, I'm gonna go down a quarter of an inch. So about right here, I'll draw a line, and then I'm gonna cut right on the line. Two inches and a quarter of an inch. And I'm just gonna cut this off. Great. Then the next fabric is the poinsettia. And I want the flower to sit right on the heel of the stocking. So like this, and this fabric is also directional and it's not really a big deal, except every once in a while you might get a little bit of a bird in there. You don't want the bird to be upside down. So I'm going to kind of place this so that I'm pretty sure that the poinsettia, when I fold it down, that's gonna land approximately in the heel. So about like that. That looks good. And then I'll stitch, flip, press, and I'll be back. There we go. Now, once again, I'm gonna trim this a little bigger than the edge of my foundation. Okay, now, once again, I'm gonna measure down two inches from this seam. And this is a curve, of course, because it's the heel, but just don't worry about that and just mark it two inches. So about right here, and then a quarter inch here. About right there. And then I will connect those lines. I can see the two inch line right here, and then the quarter inch right here. And then I'll connect those and trim. And now for the toe, I'm gonna to use the stripe. And remember, I cut it right on that sawtooth so that when I stitch it and fold it over, there's gonna be a nice red, solid, defining edge to this fabric. So I will stitch and flip. Here's how it looks. And now I'll flip this over and just trim even with the edge of the foundation. That looks good. Now I'll flip this over on the back and I'm just gonna stitch along the edge of the foundation with about an eighth inch seam allowance. I'm just top stitching, just around the edge. Here we go, that looks good. And now I'm gonna trim it even closer. I'll get all these little extra bits. Now I'd like to add some um, decorative stitching. With my um, Bernina, I have some decorative stitch options and I'm just gonna go all the way across 
from one edge to the next. I like to use the stitches that are, you know, fast and easy and that are, um, they're clear and dense so that you can see them. So I'm gonna start with a uh, triple zigzag up here. And then right here, I'm gonna do a scallop. I love a scallop. Here, I'll do a feather stitch or a blanket stitch or something like that. And maybe the same thing here. Oh, and I forgot. I'm gonna add a, a fifth row of decorative stitch stitching here kind of like to pretend that that was um, actually another piece in the patchwork. I'm going to do it all with sort of an off-white thread, white or off-white. My stocking front is complete. Um, if you like, you can add some trims, rickrack, buttons, lace, ribbons, anything you like but I have just done the machine, um, the, I have just done the decorative stitching. Here's a triple zigzag, here's a scallop, here's a feather stitch. This is kind of like a, a blanket stitch, but it goes over itself. It's like a triple blanket stitch, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then I repeated this one right here. It was very fast. Now we will assemble the stocking. So I have cut out the linings. Let's see. The linings and the back. So again, the, the back of the stocking, the toe face is in the opposite direction and these two lining pieces, it's the same thing. One is reversed. Looks like I cut this on the selvage. I think it'll be okay, but I'll just get another one. Okay, so right sides together, one lining goes to the back. So one lining goes to the red print. And we're gonna pin them across the top and then one lining goes to the front. And again, we'll pin that across the top. I'm gonna pin it so that I can sew from the back, just so I can see that um, top stitching or that Edge, I don't know what that, that that line of stitching right there and to make sure that I sew within that so I'm going to go to my machine and just sew across with a quarter of an inch seam allowance across the top of each one of these pairs they are sewn and now I'll open them up and stitch the linings together and then the front to the back and I like to turn the seam allowances down toward the front and back I start by matching up the seam allowances so that I make sure that the centers are aligned. And then I'll continue to pin all the way around to here. And I'll leave an opening in the bottom of the foot of the lining. So I'll leave an opening right here for turning. Now it's pinned and ready to go. So I'll start here, I'll back stitch, and then I'll stitch all the way around to here and I'll back stitch right here. Here we go. Now I will clip into these inside curves. And then I'll just trim the seam allowance to about half of its width. I usually do this over my trash can, so all those little bits just fall in the trash. <laughs> now I'll turn it right side out through this opening in the bottom of the lining. Just kind of reach way down and then just kind of push it through. There we go. Then I'm gonna just um, push out the seams all the way to make sure I didn't, um, you know, cut through anything too far, which I definitely have done plenty of times. And that everything looks smooth. That looks good. Great. Now, before I tuck the lining inside, I'm going to fold under this seam allowance right here and then pin and just top stitch it. 
This doesn't have to be perfect. It'll be tucked way down under here and no one will see it. So I'm just gonna top stitch this to hold the lining closed. So I just kind of top stitch that to keep it um, to keep it closed. And then I'm gonna just tuck this in so that the lining fills in the stocking shape. I'm using a chopstick. And now I will just press this flat. Now I have some red and white baker's twine, which I will use for a hanging loop. I'm just gonna stitch through just behind this side seam here. Um, there's nothing much to it except to be sure that you have a big enough eye on your needle to get the baker's twine through. And just sew it through. I am not. I'm going to trim that a little bit. And then I think I'm going to just add a bow from the baker's twine. I need a nice long piece. It's probably a little more than a yard. And then I'm just going to tie it around here. Tie a bow. Nothing fancy. Let's start with a square knot. I think it just makes it more secure. And then, hmm, you know, you can do it to your preference, however long you like the loops to be. But I will measure these so you can see, you will know exactly they're about three inches. And then I'll tie off these streamers a little bit longer, maybe four or five inches. Just a little bit longer than the loops. I don't want them to be exactly the same. There we go. I'm gonna add just a smudge of glue, just a smudge right here then I'm gonna press the center of the bow into that smudge. I'm not even gonna squeeze the glue gun. I'm just gonna sort of touch the glue gun right here. There we go. And then pull the bow down into the glue. There we go. There's that little tiny bit of glue there on the back. There's the hanging loop. There's the bow and the streamers with the little knots and the stocking is complete. So here's the little gnome girl, here's the stocking, and here's the mushroom. This mushroom I sewed buttons on for the spots. Anyway, there's our, our first three designs in the Gnome Noel collection. Thank you for watching my video. If you're enjoying my tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe.